Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Top 10 players for this Arkansas program heading into 2024. And Dill, I started early in the winter being pretty low on this Arkansas team heading into 2024. I watched the spring game. I was extremely impressed in what that offense looked like. And then you start stacking these top 10 players and say, they got some nice additions through the transfer portal. They returned some guys that you really like and say, I'm not necessarily picking, picking Arkansas to win an SEC championship, but I think they could be a little bit more dangerous than a lot of people give them credit for. I think they took care of that offensive line, which was I mean, largely a disaster in 2023. A new offensive coordinator and Bobby Petrino coming in. There are some reasons that you start stacking and say, this team could take some steps from what you saw in 2023, fired up to get into it. We got five new transfers in the top 10 before we get into it. And as always, just want to say thank you to you guys. And it's been just an absolute blast taking deep dives into all of these programs. The amount of support you guys have shown, it truly does mean a lot. One, if y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Much more importantly, we always learn a ton from you guys in the comment section with these kind of episodes. If we're sleeping on some players, let us know in the comment section. Drop your top 10s in the comments. We'll chop it up and dill. Without further ado, let's get into uh, largely my guy heading into 2024, Boise State quarterback transfer, Taylor Green. And I want to start with perfect fit in terms of what Bobby Petrino wants to do. We've seen Bobby Petrino have a ton of success with quarterbacks like Taylor Green. Now, he's coming in at number 10. I would certainly argue he could be a top five player on this program if he kind of puts it together in 2024. You take a look at the last two seasons from Boise State, you've seen the flashes of not only a really big-time arm, but some big-time athleticism as well from a pure physical trait standpoint. There's not many traits that Taylor Green does not have heading into this 2024 year. I think the kind of question surrounding him is, can Taylor Green take all those physical traits, put it together in the SEC, and I think a large piece of that puzzle is, is Coach Petrino calling the offense and kind of dialing it up and building an offense around Taylor Green that he can have some success with? And I think you want to see things come together for Taylor Green because even you go to his time at Boise State, and Boise State's been a really good program, but there's a reason their coach just got fired. It Things weren't going the same way exactly for his tenure at Boise State. I didn't think for the most part he had the weapons on the outside that he needed. They weren't playing great football for a good period of his time. So, again, you see the numbers. They weren't great at Boise State by any stretch of the imagination. But you kind of said you've seen those really good moments, has a really big arm, can really move. If Arkansas can put something around him that's a little bit more, frankly, conducive to playing good offense than they did last year for K.J. Jefferson, I think he could have a really nice year. And I think you're right with Bobby Petrino. I think – I think they did need a new coordinator. I think they got a really, really good one. I think that fell into their lap really nicely. So I'm kind of looking forward to it. They certainly needed a new coordinator. I don't, I mean, you talk about Sam Pittman being on the hot seat. It starts with making that kind of offensive coordinator hire heading into 2023. Now, give him a lot of credit. I think he fixed the problem. And I think Bobby Petrino, Taylor Green is a very intriguing matchup or kind of marriage, if you will, heading into 2024. Let's get into number nine and Dill. There was not a lot to write home about on the offensive line. In fact, there might be a lot to write home about in a negative way. Josh Brown was damn solid. And I think a lot of people just like to lump that Arkansas offensive line and just say it was a disaster. And that would largely be true. But you look at Josh Brown on the inside of that offensive line and say he was kind of the one steady, consistent piece for that Arkansas unit. Over 400 pass for opportunities, only two sacks, 13 quarterback hurries has played over 1,600 snaps in the SEC going back to his time at Florida. Josh Braun's a nice building piece, and if you talk about Arkansas kind of having a bounce-back year, Sam Pittman saving his job, it really does start with his position group on the offensive line taking a meaningful step in 2024. And Josh Braun's, like, frankly, a little hard to evaluate in a sense, right? Yeah. You can see a lot better play because – when your offensive line around you is just a very broken, it felt like obviously could get no consistency from almost anyone else. It's really, really hard to individually shine at all. So again, you wonder, you bring in a couple of really nice transfer pieces. Obviously we'll get into Carmona later on this list, 
But if they can just play better as a unit, I think that sets up for Josh Braun to individually play better, obviously everyone else to play better. And that'll be something I'm looking for because he's obviously a talented lineman. All right, let's 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 go to your guy. Number eight, Xavier Sori Jr. coming from Georgia in the transfer portal. Former five-star prospect in Dill. I'm going to just give you the tee box here because you were banging the table for me to get him in this top 10. You saw him come at number eight. You said I was still too low on him. Tell us a little bit about this kid and why you think he can be a difference maker for Arkansas. I mean, I think all you need to do is watch that SEC championship game against Bam, and that was really the only game he got really consistent burn, had a really good game, I think five tackles, and like good solo tackles where he really can run sideline to sideline, make some of those like high-impact plays where, again, making plays more along the line of scrimmage, chasing running backs and quarterbacks down. I think he's a I think he adds a level of athleticism you frankly didn't see. And I like Chris Paul last year. I like Jaheim Thomas. I think Xavier and Sorry, if you kind of take that developmental step, I think he's a much different athlete, very long. I think he can rush the passer a little bit too. I think he could be a really high end linebacker in the Two NFL. comments on that. One, kind of a nice little linebacker core. Brad Spence, another high upside linebacker going into his second year. Can Xavier Story Jr. kind of be the Drew Sanders storyline where you play Drew Sanders, played at Alabama, didn't get a ton of play time. He was a former five-star coming out of high school. He transfers to Arkansas, gets a lot of experience, gets an opportunity, and he kind of hits the ground running, was one of the best linebackers in the SEC. I think that would be massive for this Arkansas program if you can see, you know, kind of a similar trajectory for a guy like Xavier Story Jr. where you just want to see him get some more opportunity, kind of build that experience and instincts into his game. I'm excited for him. I think you're, uh, I think you're kind of right to be high on this kid heading into 2024. Number seven, another transfer portal addition, Anton Jukaj. I think that's how you say it. I actually never really heard it on the broadcast till going back and just looking at the numbers from 2023. This dude is an absolute game wrecker, right? 55 tackles, 21 and a half tackles for loss, 15 sacks, first team FCS All-American for an Albany defense that put out a ton of guys who are transferred up to the power five level, 29 run stops, 34 quarterback hurries. What's special about Anton is you're getting a heavy handed edge rusher that can be present in the run game. And you look at Arkansas, say Landon Jackson, a guy that we're going to talk about a little bit down the road and Anton and say, those are two edge rushers that not only can be extremely disruptive and get after the quarterback, but they're also hammers in the run game. And you talk about winning on first and second down, setting up some of those third and long situations. I think Arkansas, I mean, poised to be able to do that in the SEC in 2024. Yeah, I mean, they might have two of the more physical defensive yeah. in all of the SEC. I mean, you kind of watch. You're kind of right with Junkaj. I mean, just watching him. Again, not maybe the freak, freak athlete, but really explosive and really does a good job playing physical with tackles <laughs> and being able to walk them back and, and has good pass rush instincts and some moves. I think he uses hands really, really well. Obviously, when you play that physical and that heavy with them and you can back that up with just a good instinct of when to shed blocks and get off them, like, he's a really interesting player. And I'm kind of excited to see you've seen Albany have a lot of success sending guys off to those power five teams. Do you think of guys like Jared Burns? A couple other Albany guys are headed. I think Michigan's obviously getting one in Amir Hall. So been a program that's been a breeding ground for really, really good high-level college full football players. And Anton Junkaj, you can't argue with the production. He, we that. talk about two different kind of pass rushers, like one, the Ferraris, the guys who just have that twitch off the line of scrimmage that's a little bit different. Then you have the Mack trucks. Anton's a Mack truck. Like he's got some heavy hands. He is going to put tackles right into the lap of quarterbacks. I This kid has the power to thrive at the SEC level. Going to number six, and we're going to go to another transfer portal edition. And this is kind of why I'm starting, again, not picking Arkansas to win an SEC championship game, not picking them to win 10 games, but, but why could they be dangerous? They made a lot of sneaky, really good transfer portal additions. Fernando Carmona, obviously tackle, was just such a bad spot for Arkansas last year. A lot of guys playing tackle that had no business playing tackle in the SEC. 424 pass pro snaps. Two sacks, nine quarterback hurries, played some good football against power five programs like USC. Career snaps, 1,500. He's an experienced left tackle that started the last two seasons at San Jose State there. I think they get better at both tackle spots and Fernando Carmona. They're going to be a big-time difference maker for this Arkansas team. 
Yeah, I thought you saw exactly what you wanted, a very polished offensive tackle. And it looks like physically shouldn't have any problem. Has the right build that you want to see. Obviously, when he went and played teams like USC, stood tall, looked really, really good. Didn't like have any real drop off. So feel completely comfortable with him moving up. I think he's going to be a really good left tackle for them. Number five, in another transfer portal edition, this one coming from Utah, the running back spot, Jaquindon Jackson. A little bit of a background on Jaquindon Jackson. Came out of high school as a quarterback and won a lot of games at the high school level. Actually, the, the high school film of him playing quarterback was extremely impressive. Commits to Texas, transfers to Utah, transitions to that running back spot, and this kid has just hit the ground running. You talk about a physical downhill, imposing running back. That's what you have in Jaquindon Jackson. He is so good at as absorbing contact, being downhill, kind of changing, keeping your offense on schedule. And you look back to where Arkansas struggled so bad last year. They faced so many third and long situations because they really couldn't consistently run the football. Jaquindon Jackson is a guy that he's going to give you four to five yards. He's going to turn second and sevens into second and fives, third and threes into third and ones. And you talk about a running back that you can give 200 plus carries to keep you on schedule, grind down opposing defenses. I think Jaquinta Jackson is kind of that guy for Arkansas. Yeah, I love the physicality he runs with. And I tell you, when you think, go back to his story as coming from a quarterback, and you're like, man, this guy really runs that way. I mean, ultra physical, yeah. really good. Hopefully, he can just stay a little bit more healthy. Obviously, that's been one thing, just keeping him a little more consistently on the field. But if he stays healthy and has a good year for her, or you can just be healthy for the year for Arkansas. He's kind of the back. I think you're right. They need to stay out of those obvious passing down situations. They were getting killed there last year. I think he can keep You go on. back to 2022, this was one of the best running backs in the country, and he almost went to the NFL draft. I, this is this is was a really sneaky good pickup for Arkansas. Going to number four, young cap, Jalen Braxton, led the team, eight pass breakups, one interception, a 41% completion percentage. When targeted, this kid was a revelation as a true freshman for Arkansas. And going into year two, you could be looking at one of the better cornerbacks in the SEC. I love Jalen Braxton. I thought the way he emerged as a true freshman, I, I'm really happy they were able to keep him. That feels like a guy who sometimes can be a little bit in flux when you're on a team that really struggles the way Arkansas did and you play that well as a freshman. But credit them. They've kept most of their young nucleus. I think he's very much part of that. He had a really, really nice year. Really good in coverage, good ball skills, obviously. I, I think he develops a little bit. He's one of the better cornerbacks in the conference. Let's go to another true freshman here and Luke Haas. The, there were some young talent. And now the thing with Luke Haas only played five games. Five games, had 16 catches, 253 yards, three touchdowns, a small sample size, zero drops, 94% completion percentage when targeted Dill. If this kid stayed healthy, you were looking at a true freshman All-American. You might be looking at an All-American caliber tight end for Luke Haas going into year two. This was a kid that I love coming from high school. It was a massive addition for Arkansas in that 2023 class. Big fan of Luke Haas, another piece of young talent that's coming back to Arkansas in 2024. If he stays healthy, he's going to be a force for Arkansas in 2024. No, I know. I'm really, you really love seeing those young tight ends play really good football. And obviously you just continue to get a little bit more athletic, grow into what you're doing. He's a really, really interesting piece. And I, you kind of wish you have to see him all year. What's he's so cool. interesting about Luke Haas is that tight end position is such a field position. And he just, he looked like he had been playing tight end at the college football level for five years as a true freshman. It, you, I don't mean to make the comp, but that's kind of how you felt about Brock Bowers when he was a true freshman. Like this kid just coming in and just having such command of the position. You only saw it for five games, broken clavicle, I believe. But man, did he have just such command of that position at the SEC as a true freshman. Talk about some more guys that just, I mean, huge for Arkansas to get back going into 2024. Andrew Armstrong, I think this kid could have been an NFL draft pick had he wanted to led Arkansas in receptions, yards and touchdowns really good after the catch. That was something that when I went back and watched a few games, like this kid can operate after the catch. He can work vertically down the field. I, an all encompassing wide receiver. You have some really interesting pass catchers for Bobby Petrino to get to work with, right? Andrew Armstrong, Luke Hodge, we talked about, but you got guys like Tyron Broden, who Isaac Tesla, Guys that flashed, and if you can get a little bit more consistency from some of those guys, and I think Bobby Petrino calling the plays is certainly going to facilitate that, 
I look at this passing attack and I look at the past catchers in this Arkansas offense and say, you got some juice there. No, and you, especially when you have a guy like Armstrong, who again, for being his size, really moves well. I feel like can work in those short intermediate ranges better than I think people would think, given that he is that 6'4", 200 plus pound kind of guy. Obviously, he can get over the top really effectively. Just a very, very complete wide receiver. I think in most teams, he's a thousand yard guy. If yeah. the offense is clicking a little bit more, obviously, Arkansas never really quite got to that point, but he's a guy who's just super dynamic and kind of work anywhere on the field make contested catches. I think he should have a huge year if this offense just can you know, be a little bit more in, in control of what they're doing. Number one player, Landon Jackson. And this was another massive get back for 2024. Third on the team in 20, with 23 round stops. Second on the team, 10 quarterback curries. You see the stat line, 13 and a half TFL, six and a half sacks. Another heavy-handed edge rusher for Arkansas. And you look at Landon and Anton and say, that could be one of the better pass rusher defensive end duos that you see in the country. That's kind of why you got me believing a little bit in Arkansas, because I think they can put some heat on a lot of quarterbacks in the SEC. And you love what they're going to both do in the pass rush. And I think it's going to make really uncomfortable pockets for quarterbacks just because yeah. they're both really good at kind of getting home, being disruptive, driving tackles back in the quarterback's laps. But at the end of the day, these two, I think what you're really, really excited about is they're just going to be so hard to run on. I thought Landon Jackson was one of the better run defenders I've seen last year, just how well he's able to get back into the backfield, disrupt what running backs are trying to do. And you say the same things about Junkar. So I think this is going to be a dynamic with these two that should make it really, really hard to run the football against. All right, so I left a player out of this top 10 list that you were very upset at me for leaving out. I'll give you 30 seconds to kind of sell us on this kid. Yeah, and we want to talk about being a hard team to run against. I think when you have a Cameron Ball on the team, and you're just stat watching, I know what you're doing, because, you, oh, you didn't have a ton of TFLs, didn't have a ton of sacks. You watch, I think he was pretty good at collapsing pockets for the most part. Really, really good holding up against double teams, keeping linebackers free. Cameron Ball, I think, have a huge year for them. I think he's wildly underrated. Again, not a wildly, wildly productive player, but plays the defensive tackle position at really high level the way I think you want to see When him. you texted me his name, I he never really popped on the film when I went back and watched Arkansas, did some reading about him. You are right. The Within the program, I think they're really excited to get Cameron Ball back heading into 2024. And again, the front seven, I think you're kind, you kind of – there's a couple of reasons to believe. One, you have a very high upside quarterback in Taylor Green who certainly can win you some football games if he puts it together. You made – If this money. offensive line was respectable last year, they win a lot of more football. Yeah, I mean, they're yeah. in it with Alabama. They're in and it you with look at you look at the transfer portal additions they made, and I think that kind of echoes what you just said. They made the transfer portal additions. They weren't necessarily the flashiest transfer portal additions, but they did it the right way. They looked at this roster and said, hey, where do we need to get better heading into 2024? I feel like they got better at a lot of those spots, a.k.a. the offensive tackle spot. There's some reason to believe in this Arkansas team. And again, not picking to win the SEC – could be dangerous in 2024. We'll close it out on that. Let us know some players we are sleeping on in the comment section. Appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We'll talk to y'all later. Peace.